Thank you for joining us today. We would like to take a few minutes to discuss data from an oral presentation and poster summarizing our phase one ADP A2 AFP trial presented today at the Virtual International Liver Congress. My colleague, Mark Dudley, is here with me to discuss how we are thinking about our approach to early phase development. We would refer you to the press release we issued this morning for more details about the data and the disclaimers regarding forward-looking statements, which are also outlined there. As a quick reminder, this is a modified three plus three dose escalation trial. We have completed the first three cohorts and are currently enrolling in the expansion cohort. Most patients enrolled in this trial have advanced disease and have received multiple prior lines of therapy. In addition to patients with AFP expressing hepatocellular cancers, we have opened a cohort to treat patients with other AFP expressing tumors. We will share data about this cohort at a later date. We have treated three patients in cohort three and one in the expansion cohort as of the data cutoff. Of these four patients treated with doses of approximately 5 billion cells, one had a complete response, one had stable disease, and two progressed. The patient who had a complete response has now developed new lesions at week 32, with an overall duration of response of approximately seven months. This patient also had a sustained reduction in serum AFP. In cohorts one and two, we have treated five patients. In these two cohorts, although there were no responses according to RESIST criteria, we did see further evidence of anti-tumor activity at these lower doses, with all five patients having stable disease as best overall response. These data indicate that our SPEAR T cells targeting AFP are active and able to engage with the tumor as shown in the patient who had a complete response, an achievement unto itself in this population. We are treating patients in the expansion cohort with doses up to 10 billion cells. We are also looking at translational data so that if necessary, we can explore ways to make this an even more effective therapy, which will be discussed by Mark in just a moment. In these next two slides, I want to give a quick overview of clinical safety, which is of particular interest given that this therapy targets AFP, which is a protein often overexpressed by liver cancer cells, but also found in non-cancerous liver tissue. We are encouraged by the safety we have seen to date. We have not seen any hepatotoxicity clearly attributable to our T cells. Reported adverse events have been consistent with what would be expected in patients with advanced liver cancer receiving chemo and T cell therapies. There have been no protocol defined dose limiting toxicities reported. With this graph, I want to highlight that most adverse events that were grade three or above were hematologic, consistent with patients who received lymphodepleting chemotherapy prior to cell therapy. These events were generally clustered around the first seven days and trended toward resolution by 21 days. Before I turn it over to Mark, I also want to point out that we saw spear T cell expansion and persistence correlate with transduced cell dose, consistent with what we have seen with other spear T cell therapies. I'd also like to thank the patients, their families and caregivers, as well as the investigators and their teams for participating in this study. We are encouraged by these early data and committed to developing this treatment, continuing to treat patients in the expansion cohort over the next few months. We will share additional data, including findings from our translational research in due course. Mark? Thanks, Elliot. We're expanding Adaptimmune's development capabilities aligned with the vision and mission that our CEO, Adrian Rockcliffe, set out when he took the role last year. One of the priorities of this expansion is to strengthen the end-to-end -end scientific and clinical operations using risk-based analysis and driving faster decisions. 
We set up an early phase development program within the clinical development organization, and this is the group that I lead. We always prioritize patient safety and explore product and platform improvements that increase potency and improve the patient experience. T-cell therapy is a relatively new approach with lots of opportunities. These include exploiting tumor attributes as well as developing next-gen approaches and combination therapies. Preclinical and translational data enable iterative study designs and rapid product evolution. We learn everything we can from each patient treated. We do that with comprehensive translational data collection and research. The data we gather from all our spirit T cell trials, including the ADP A2 AFP phase one trial, help us understand why some patients respond while others don't, as well as understanding more about the responses themselves. These translational findings enable us to adapt the way we conduct a trial midstream and to potentially provide enhanced benefits rapidly. We analyze data to determine whether a T-cell therapy can engage cancer cells and whether it may potentially benefit people with cancer. A recent example of success using this approach has been our decision to proceed to a phase two trial in gastroesophageal cancers after we saw tumors shrink in two out of the first three patients treated in the first cohort of the SURPASS trial with our next gen ADP, A2M4, CD8, spear T cells. In the longer term, we are looking at improving the impact of our therapy through more next-gen products, combination therapies, changes to the manufacturing process, and patient journey optimizations. For ADP A2 AFP, we have just started treating patients, and with what we think are likely to be therapeutic doses in the expansion cohort, and we need more data to evaluate this therapy. The complete response and other evidence of activity for ADP, A2, AFP are very encouraging and are clear signals that the T cells are able to recognize cancer in patients. This initial signal in such a disease is a fantastic positive sign. I know I speak for Elliot and the rest of my colleagues when I say we are working speedily to bring forward effective cell therapies for people with cancer, including ADP, A2, AFP for people with advanced liver cancer.